so much. Uh, I at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Mayur Agarwal for inviting me for this conference. And uh, uh, this is uh, something I think uh, a very important session. And uh, Dr. Bansi, Dr. Sandeep, and Dr. Unni uh, Krishnan is going to uh, uh, speak on this uh, topic. And the topic allotted to me is the evolution and the currently available CGM. So I thought uh, when all the other uh, uh, speakers and the experts, they will be speaking on the other aspects of the uh, CGM. I would talk about the evolution in the currently available CGMs. So this is something, uh, I, I think my slides are visible to all of you. So uh, CGM, uh, we all know it is simply a uh, device which can be placed uh, on the, the body and it monitors the blood glucose continuously and there are many modalities by which it can be done and uh, it has evolved over a period of time more than 40 years uh, that people are trying to uh, build up this technology of the continuous glucose monitoring and uh, many more things we are awaiting in the near future also. So just to set up the agenda, I would like to start with the journey of the CGMs. And uh, in the 1999, the first CGM was approved by the FDA. And this uh, system was the CGM system from the Medtronic Minimed. And uh, the device uh, used to provide three days of glucose data, which was meant initially for a physician rather than a patient to review. So this was the beginning of the CGM uh, era. And the device was intended to help physicians establish patients' glucose profiles and monitor insulin therapy. So this was the objective when the first CGM was approved in the 1999. It took patients reading every 10 seconds and while providing five minutes averages, and the sensor had a maximum life of 72 hours. And like many others that would follow, the device would require finger stick-based blood glucose calibration. So this was uh, this is about the first CGM device which was approved by the FDA in 1999 and it was from the Medtronics. Then this is interesting to know that uh, the GlucoWatch biographer from the Cygnus Incorporation won the marketing approval for adults with the diabetes. And this was the FDA first real-time CGM, which was approved in the 2001. This was the only system which used to provide a glucose readings to the patients when introduced. So this was the first real-time CGM which uh, patient could see their readings. Uh, it was having an armband and it was an armband device which was non-invasive. So it was not widely, the device was not very, uh, widely successful because uh, the one of the side effects of the using this device was the local site irritation and the animals which uh, initially acquired the rights for the GlucoWatch and then its successor, the GlucoWatch G2 biographer, it stopped selling the technology in 2007. And then later on, uh, later J&J acquired animals in 2006. So this is uh, quite interesting that in uh, even 2001, we had a non-invasive continuous glucose monitor. There were some limitations. I, I'm sure uh, the coming uh, years, we are going to see more, uh, more and more of the non-invasive glucose uh, CGMs. Uh, in 2004, the Medtronics uh, won the first FDA approval for its Guardian CGM system. And uh, this had, for the first time, uh, the pro uh, this device had to be uh, a property okay. where it could warn users okay. when they okay. okay. any okay. predefined dangerous levels. So okay. the okay. device would lose values every five minutes. Yeah. And uh, so this was the beginning where the, some yeah. alarms could have been set up in the CGM devices. And in 2004, the Dexcom came into the picture and it introduced its first real-time CGM, and which was known as the uh, Dextone STS, short for short-term sensor. The device shared glucose reading every five minutes. And like Medtronic's Guardian device, the STS could also provide alerts when glucose level dip or rise above predefined thresholds. And that device was, again, intended to be used only for the 72 hours. So this is how the journey of the CGM kept on building. Uh, in 2006, uh, the insulin... Uh, uh, pumps, they uh, they started to couple with uh, the CGM systems. And in 2006, the Medtronic's first integrated insulin pump and CGM system was launched. And uh, this uh, was for the Minimed Paradigm Real Time System, uh, which uh, Medtronic described as a milestone towards the development of an artificial pancreas. And the following year, the company expanded the indication for its CGMs to include patient age 7 to 17 years. For the first time, the CGM indication uh, was approved for the use in the year for the age group of 7 to 17 years. 2007, uh, you see the Dexcom again is introduced the 7 CGM. And this device was the first approved for up to seven days of use. So uh, now the timing of the CGM started to improve. The duration of the CGM uh, started to improve. And it was Dexcom CGM, uh, 7 CGM could be used for seven days. And this was the model with updated software known as the 7 Plus. And it introduced blood sugar trending arrows. 
and the trend arrows could help people with diabetes anticipate in advance when blood sugars are starting to trend high old. so this was the first new feature that was introduced in the dexcom cgm in 2007 In 2007, again, uh, there was a very close competition. So, Medtronic launched the Guardian uh, real-time system with Minilink transmitter, and the standard personal CGM features a smaller transmitter that precedes uh, preceding models, and the transmitter is waterproof uh, to a depth of eight feet for 30 minutes when connected to the glucose sensor. So, this is the uh, first in 2008. The Abbott came into picture and it launched its first freestyle navigator CGM in the US. you could see the picture in this slide with a sensor life of up to 5 days the navigator provided patients with blood glucose values updated once every 60 seconds so this was the freestyle navigator in 2008 again metronic introduced its next generation professional cgm which was known as i pro and this was if again a physician targeted device it was smaller and lighter than the preceding models uh 2012 uh dexcom introduced the dexcom uh, g4 platinum and it was offering improved accuracy when measuring hypoglycemic blood glucose levels the device also could work for up to 7 consecutive days and the device also featured a consumer technology influenced design and the company would expand its functionality in 2015 15 with the introduction of the dexcom share receiver that transmits g4 platinum blood glucose data by a bluetooth to a smartphone or ipod touch app so this was the change where uh, the cgm started to integrate with the smart devices and the smartphones and the other things and this functionality allowed a patient to share data with up to five designated recipients and the dexcom won permission to use the device in pediatric patient in 2015 and in 2013 the metronic introduced its second generation integrated insulin pump and cgm and this is was uh, metronic's 530g and light this was the first integrated insulin pump cgm to offer a threshold suspend feature to manage hypoglycemia and uh, when the blood sugar level they tend to fall below a predefined level the pumps stop pumping insulin for 2 hours and this was again a sensor based uh, metronic uh, pump and this was using a second generation of the uh, in, uh, cgm devices from the metronic In 2015, uh, the Dexcom launched its G5 mobile uh, sensor, and the G5 mobile was the first that enabled people with diabetes to manage glucose levels via smartphone. So this was again a game cha changer, and the device was approved for the adults and children as young as two years old. So again, the indication bracket came down to uh, from seven years to two years, and the device also supported the share functionality of its predecessor. So again, that reading could be shared again with more than five people. in 2016 the abbott uh, we all know uh, and uh, we uh, in current generation we have grown up with the system the abbott launched its free style libre pro it had it has the longest lifespan at that time 14 days and as with any other professional device uh, only the doctors or the professionals could see the data whenever the patient visited the doctor's office and a physician using a free style libre pro reader can access multiple patients data and the sensor we all know is again water resistant up to 3 feet for up to 30 minutes so this was again uh, an advancement in the development of the cgm devices uh this is 2017 when the abbott launched the freestyle libre for the us patient and this device was factory calibrated that is that means that it would not require any kind of finger prick testing and the manufacturer they want uh, they referred it to as a flash glucose monitoring system and this uh, patient focused device could be worn for 10 days in 2017 now we know that we have freestyle libre 2 also and libre 3 is also coming where we can use it for more than 40 days in 2018 the dexcom launches the g6 and the g G6 uh, has many upgrades and features uh, from the uh, preceding models, and the sensor again has a 10-day lifespan, like the Abbott Freestyle Libre, and it also does not require any kind of finger stick calibration, although such calibration is supported. The device also features more robust interoperability than the preceding models, making it compatible with insulin pumps and the mobile apps. Uh, this is again a game changer in the CGM monitoring for weeks, and uh, again the, some kind of intervention can be. Done in the field of diabetes also, and the ever since CGM from the Sensionix, it provides glucose data every five minutes for up to ninety days via implantable sensor. So this is the longest uh, recording uh, CGM device, and a transmitter in a mobile app uh, is available in the system. And the company's system, which had a one eighty lifespan, is awaited the FDA approval. And in two twenty twenty twenty, we know that the free style Libre two also wins the FDA clearance. So this is how the CGM device uh, have been. Uh, changing and they have been developing and a lot of them are now uh, available for our current use and, uh, and the next speakers they are going to talk about 
uh, the supply seeming variability, the other data, and the the use of the CGMs and many more things in their talk. So I'm not going to cover that. But it is important to highlight that the this the development of the CGM is evidence based, and 27 randomized controlled trials have assessed the outcomes of CGM uh, in more than 3,800 patients, and they have been published till date. And there is a cumulative evidence that indicates that the benefit of the patient, CGM patients who are treated with uh, either insulin pump or multiple uh, daily insulin regimes, uh, the CGM device actually helps them a lot. Overall, uh, RCTs have shown improved glucose control in patients high, with initial higher HbA1c and using CGM compared to cell monitoring of the blood glucose device. And it has been seen that the people who wear their CGM device most consistently, they benefit the most. So the time spent in the designated hypoglycemia range was reduced in some studies, particularly in those with patients who were selected for having a higher risk of hypoglycemia. So these are the certain evidence-based things for the CGM. Uh, I will not go into the details uh, for the uh, data because uh, you can see the publication of the Beck et al., Lewis, and uh, Gianni and Von Pears, and all these observational studies uh, and some of them prospective as well as the randomized label clinical trials. And they all found that CGM can actually to the glycemic control and reduce the risk of hypoglycemia in patients. These are certain uh, studies and data uh, which has been published from the Indian uh, authors, uh, including Dr. Jyoti Dev Keshwadev and uh, some of the studies from the Dr. Mohan's group also. And uh, these are again retrospective cohort and the prospective studies. And uh, they have again found that some sort of CGMs in different set, uh, uh, study settings, uh, they were uh, improving the uh, overall glycemic control. So just to talk about what are the uh, current generation systems, we can classify them into two categories. One is the professional and the personal. So the professional available CGMs include the Dexcom G4, the Medtronic i2, the Freestyle Libre Pro, and the personal are the Dexcom G5, G6, Freestyle Libre, the Medtronic Guardian Connect, and the Medtronic Pump Integrated Allied Guardian. The professional CGM devices are those devices where uh, uh, patients wear uh, without being able to see the glucose values and only the provider downloads and reviews the data retrospectively during an office visit. Where the personal systems, they are uh, allowing the patient to see the readings in the real time and uh, retrospective review of the complete profiles can also be done by the, the care provider in the clinic or the remote fee as well. Uh, so uh, this is the difference between the professional and the personal. The professional CGMs, they are blinded and unblinded options are there. The personal CGM, the, the real time feedback was scanned for instant feedback. Short term use, three to fourteen days. Personal is for the long term use, and uh, they all uh, for the uh, they are for the continuous glucose monitoring. If we look at the comparison of the available uh, continuous glucose monitoring system, we have Dexcom G6, Libre 14, Libre 2, Guardian Connect, and the Guardian 3. In India, we don't have Dexcom uh, till now, but we have uh, about Libre and the Guardian Connect. So you see that. Uh, one of the limitation is that in Libre uh, sensor, you need to scan the data. And if you don't scan the data, you uh, don't get anything out of it. And uh, there are alarms in the Dexcom G6, but there are no alarms in the Libre. And the Libre 2 had some alarm, but the Libre 2 is not available in India. The Guardian Connect uh, again has the, the alarm in the Guardian 3 also has alarms. So these are the, this table actually shows the uh, comparable features of the different CGM. So I think uh, in the next three talks, we will become more and more wiser about the use of CGM. So uh, this is the journey and the evolution of the CGM and the currently available CGM in India. So thank you. Thank you very much for your patient listening. So I would like to uh, conclude my presentation here.